Hello, bonjour, guten tag, and welcome to Comrade Motorsport. Today we are looking at track day preparation. So we've got track day coming up, motorcycle track day coming up. Whilst I'm going through everything, getting it all together, I thought I'd give you guys a quick rundown of some of the things that I like to do to make the day easier. Um, I'm by no means Mark Marquez or Casey Stoner or Freddie Spence or any of the great riders. I'm not that fast at all. And by no means do you need all of this stuff to make your track day a success. It's just some of the things that I've done over the years that have helped me, helped the day to run smooth. Um, I suppose it's aimed more at new guys to track days, but hopefully somebody can take, or everybody can take something away from the video. Um, I don't want to come across as if I'm telling people how to suck eggs, and this is only my personal advice. There's lots of other information out there, lots of other social groups where you can get similar advice. So I would advise you to go and check out as much information as you can. At the end of the day, it's all about having fun. So always check with your provider, whoever you've booked the track day with. But hopefully, like I say, you can take some bits out of this. So let's get into it. We're going to split this video into three main parts, which is going to be the admin for the day, um, the physical bits, about uh, which is also broken down into two parts, which is the kit and the motorcycle, and then yourself and how you can prepare yourself for the day. So let's get into it. Okay, folks, let's start off by talking about the admin for the day then. Um, what I mean by admin is all the things that you can do to try and prepare yourself to have a smoother, more relaxed day and concentrate, focus on the riding of the motorcycle, which is what it's all about, really. And then my apologies if you keep seeing me looking down or looking around. I've had to make myself a few notes because there's a lot of things that I forget when I'm trying to put this across to you guys. So let's start with uh, signing on and briefing videos. So these are things that you have to go online and sign on with your name, address, details, uh, next of kin, etc. And then complete the briefing videos before you'll be able to sign on on the day. If you don't complete them beforehand, there is an opportunity normally to do them on the day, but obviously that's just an added thing that you've then got to take into account when you get there. Um, next thing is probably your license. Make sure you've got the correct license. Uh, this all depends on how old you are, whether it's a race license, a road license, what track you're on. Uh, where it is, whether it's the UK, Europe or further afield. Just something to be aware of and definitely something you need to make sure is sorted before you book on the day. Um, again, all of this information, the best thing to do is check with your provider as to their particular uh, nuances that they like to see. Uh, next thing I would say is make sure you've got the transport sorted for the day. So it's easy to overlook this, um, especially if you're deciding that you're going to ride your road bike to the track day, which is absolutely fine, not a problem doing that. But I would always advise, get yourself some backup transport in case your plan to ride home doesn't come out for any eventuality, the bike breaks down or you have a minor spill and you can't ride it. Have a backup plan in place to get the bike home before you've even left the house with the bike. Um, and um, if it's a, a track race bike only, obviously make sure the van's got breakdown cover, especially if you're traveling miles away. You want to be able to make sure you get there no matter what happens to the transport. Uh, another thing to take into account is the fuel for the bike, especially if you're riding there on the day. Um, has the track that you're going to got a fuel station on site or very local that you can pop out to and top up with fuel? So normally I will take a 25 litre can with me and top the tank up throughout the day. But again, if you're riding there, you can't take that with you. So it's definitely worth checking to see whether that is available on site for you or not. Check out the journey times. If there's a new track you're going to, see how long the journey is going to take, any road closures that might be in place. Um, and if it is a bit further afield, definitely book yourself a hotel. Um, for the price of the day, you know, you want to get the most out of it. So if you book a hotel to stay overnight, over the night before, I'd recommend... Um, even two nights, the night before or after, and after, it's basically there to make sure that when you're on track, you're prepared and fresh and ready for it, because it's a very exciting day, especially if you're new to it. Um, and if you travelled four or five hours to get to the circuit, the last thing you want to be doing is a full track day, it's very physical, and then driving all the way back home again. So that is worth looking into and not what some people would deem as a waste of money. Um, have a look at the track info. 
So go online, have a look at some onboards. It's very, very different. Whenever you get to the circuit, you can watch as many onboards as you like. When you're actually there riding round, it's a different thing entirely. So it does help to learn where the track goes though. So when you first get out on track, you've got an idea of which direction you're going in and roughly where you want to be heading. You can look into track insurance. There's a lot of companies that offer this. Um, I know BMoto is a very good track insurance provider. Um, you never know when the worst could happen. I mean, it's, if it's a small spill and it's a clip-on or a rear set or something small like that, not too bad. If it's a road bike and you've got road fairings and mirrors and lights and everything else on it, it can very, very quickly write the bike off. So it's definitely worth looking into for that, in that case. And probably lastly is if you're getting to the point where you feel like you've run out of all the things that you can use in your own arsenal to progress and get quicker and safer and work on your technique, would be to pre-book some tuition for the day. Now this is something that is, some people look at it as really expensive, but it is by far the best money you could spend to learn to ride faster and safer and improve your technique on track. Uh, if you book one-to-one -one tuition for the whole day, you're gonna get feedback after every session, and they're gonna work on your weakest point until you've improved that enough that something else becomes your weakest point, and then you can work on that. So slowly throughout the day, you will make massive progression and they'll also give you things to work on next time you're out on track, even when they're not there. So well, well worth the money. So now that we've covered the admin for the day, let's go and have a look at all the physical stuff we need to prep for the day. So then guys, let's start off with the physical bits of the day, the physical components themselves. As you can see, everything here is laid out on a table. Uh, if you've got a few of you going, a few of your mates and you're in a garage, it is really nice to have a table. You can just get in there, get set up, put all your gear out for the day, not worry about it. So on here, we'll run through it. We've got uh, a toolbox, which is mainly used for the go-karting, but it's got your standard socket sets, tools, pliers, spanners, etc. in there. So a lot of those tools are dedicated carting tools, but I take it along with me. The one thing I will add to that and make sure you've got with you is a nut to fit onto your uh, axle, your axle nut, because it's quite a large nut that don't normally come with a standard socket set. So something like that or a Halford's toolkit, anything that you can do a little bit of maintenance with is ideal. Moving on, in the case we've got, uh, this is a little bit overkill to be honest, but again, it's something we use for the carting. So this is just a large tire pressure gauge, so you can really get in detail what tire pressure you're actually setting it to. You've got a sure meter there, which is to check for your tire hardness in case you've left the bike over winter, and a pyrometer, which is basically a digital infrared thermometer, which will give you the temperature of the surface of the tire. It's not ideal, ideally you wanna be checking the carcass, but uh that's it's better than nothing and with this combination of adjusting tire pressures checking temperature and hardness you can on the day play around with your own tire pressures and hopefully find something that works for you uh, every track's different every tire is different every rider uses it different i'm not going to start advising people on tire pressures on here it's down for you to try and use the manufacturer's recommendations speak to people and try it out for yourself with regards to inflating the tires You've got standard foot pump, standard hand pump, either of those work absolutely fine. I do actually have a generator and a compressor of an airline as well, so I normally take the compressor if there's power, just because it's easier to pump them up. Um, another key tip is to overinflate them before you go, so that when you're there on the day, all you've actually got to do is use the large pressure gauge just to drop them down slightly. Uh, a couple of extension leads used for tyre warmers. Make sure they're all working. Ratchet straps, check they're all in good condition. No problems with those. A little box of spares, so we've got fairing screws, um, baffles there. Make sure you've got your baffles. If you're not sure whether you're gonna actually pass a noise test, you can download multiple decibel apps and uh, actually try that on the bike before you go. Spare rear sets, it'd be nice to have a spare set of clip-ons or at least handlebars as well. Any little bits and pieces that you might break in a small spill, needs, it's ideal to take with you because then you can hopefully repair the bike and get back out. Uh, below that we've got tyre warmers. Now tyre warmers, uh, people might see them as a, an expense you don't really need, but if you look at it in the way that you're actually increasing the life of your tyre, because rather than going through six or seven 
heat cycles throughout the day, you're only putting them through one heat cycle. Not only that, you've paid a lot of money to get on track. If you're wasting one or two laps at the start of every session to warm your tyres up to be safe, then you're wasting your track time. So your tyre warmers cut that down to half a lap, lap maximum really. Moving on from there, we've just got a little fold away camping chair. Everybody likes to sit down, so that's ideal to take a camping chair. And with regards to your cameras, your lap timers, anything you're going to take that's electronic like that, just make sure it's all charged up, make sure your memory cards are ready. You know, the idea is to try and take the minimum amount of stress through the day. So you just want everything working and set up. Down here we've got a consumables box, which has got uh, rags, brake cleaners, engine oils, hand wipes, chain lubes, gaffer tape, cable ties. There's a fiberglass kit in there as well. Again, just any small little repairs that you might need to do on the day should be covered by anything in there. And coming around to the corner, we've got a fuel can, which you need. An aluminium ramp, I've used bits of folding wood for years, but you know, if you can get one of these, then it's much easier and it's much nicer if you pick one up cheap. And if you look just down here in the corner, be quiet guys, he's quite shy. He's shy. Come in. Come on. Come on, it's all right. Here he is. It's Gerard. Hello, Gerard. Say hello. Hey, what's that? You don't want to say hello, Gerard. Why don't you want to say hello? No, no, they won't call the police. No, no, they're, they're good people. Okay, okay, sorry. Let's pop him back down there. Gerard's very, very camera shy, to be honest, because he has been known to have a bit of a penchant for Shell V power. So he is worried that if he becomes famous, the police are going to be after him. So if you do see him around the paddock at all, just make sure all your fuel cans are done up and locked away. Um, I'm lucky enough to have a spare set of wets on wheels. So they've got the sprockets, the discs. I've also got a spare rear tyre, just in case I get a puncture or anything like that. Um, if you do have this sort of setup, it's nice to make sure obviously all the sprockets are the same size, gearing, go straight on. You just need to make sure they bolt straight into the bike and you can use them without any aggravation, spacers, etc. Um, I can't emphasise enough the need for a good quality paddock stand. Now you can buy cheapish stands, 40 50 pounds, but when you're on and off the stands all day with tyre warmers on and off, these Harris stands, you can pick them up for around £100 each, each end. They're unbelievably good quality and, you know, people, when you look around a paddock, a racing paddock, that's what people use is good quality stuff. So that's, that's there for a reason, keeps the bike safe when you're working on it. So that's the equipment. With regards to bits and pieces, let's move on to the actual riding equipment next. So here we have it guys, here's the riding equipment. We've got ourselves a pair of good, decent motorcycle gloves, proper gloves. Don't be tempted to turn up with a pair of marigolds or gardening gloves because they won't let you out on track. Boots, motorcycle boots. Again, quite cheap these boots, but very good quality track day boots. Um, by UK track day legislation, you now have to wear a back protector on all UK tracks. That is... Uh, you know it's all there for your own safety all of this kit is all there for your own safety so you just need to make sure that it's all in good condition before you use it sometimes you haven't used it over the winter if you haven't looked at it you might put on a few pounds put it on make sure it fits you know um even if you have used it regularly when was the last time you picked your leathers up and actually looked around the stitching and made sure that all the stitching's good it's only a, a two minute check it's there for your own safety. But the back protector is definitely a must have. A lot of um, a lot of track day providers now actually allow you to rent them out on the day. So check with your track day provider, they might offer that service. Next to that, we've got the Buttery Biscuit base layer. That is uh, a must have for me now. I never used to use them, but since I've put one on, it is absolutely ideal. It just keeps you comfortable inside the levers all day. I did used to use a pair of the Mrs. Tights, but I did find the toenails kept laddering them every time you put them on, so I've actually gone out and treated myself to a base layer now. Uh, regards to the levers, again, like I've just said, check them all over, make sure they fit, check the knee sliders, you know, they're there for your protection. 
make sure they're going to protect you if necessary especially if you've had an off in them you see a lot of people just get back on and don't even check the gear out and then moving on to the helmet you have to by UK legislation again make sure your crash helmet is got this gold ACU sticker on the back there just to make sure it's safe for use and if you've got them if you've got it available it's nice to take spare visors clear visors tinted visors you know as the weather changes through the day if it gets wet if uh, if there's low sun and you need to put a tint visor back on and I mean if you've even got a spare crash helmet you can take that with you because if you do get a couple of wet sessions throughout the day in this situation there's nothing worse than having a wet helmet that you've got to put back on and normally for a man a wet helmet is a positive thing in this case it's nice to have two crash helmets just to uh, to be able to go between and put back on if there's a dry session so that's the kit guys let's move on and have a look around the bike So guys, now we've had a look through some of the kit, let's have a look around the machine itself. Um, so let's start off by talking about if you're taking a road bike to the track, um, some of the basic things that you want to be doing is first of all, go over it and take off any unnecessary accessories on there. So uh, if you've got a pillion seat and you've got a cowling you can replace it with, or if you've got any uh, phone holders or sat nav systems on there, or panniers, luggage racks, anything like that, you want to get rid of that. You don't want that falling off on track. Um, a lot of that stuff hasn't been designed and tested at those sorts of speeds. So remove all of that. And moving on to your mirrors. Um, the mirrors, ideally, you want to be folding them in or taking them off if you can, or as a bare minimum, taping them up because that's not something you want to be concentrating on on what's coming up behind you. It's not something you're going to need on track. So if you can remove them, if not, definitely tape them up. Whilst you're up the front there, you want to be taping up your speedo because there is no need to be using your speedo on track at all. The only thing that's going to do is distract you from what you should be doing. And you're going to be looking at the end of the straight when you're going the fastest on track, what speed you're hitting because all your mates are going to ask you and that's going to take your attention away from making the corner end up in the gravel or the barrier so not a good idea uh, the next thing as well whilst you're up the front there is the lights themselves this one's got a headlamp protector on but if you can take the lights up not only does it stop lights that stay on all the time on some um, manufacturers motorcycles from distracting other track riders but it does mean if you do have a spill it stops a lot of the glass and everything smashing around all over the track giving the marshals more to clear up um, as we come around the back, the other thing that I'd suggest is to remove or tape up the number plate. Now, I mean, I have heard stories of insurance companies being at track days taking down number plates. I've never seen it personally, but it's something that can happen, so you might as well just whip it off anyway. And then I would also advise all the little bits and pieces, the expensive bits, so your indicators and things like that. Um, and as a bare minimum, try and fit some crash protection, some some crash bungs on the front, some crash bungs on the expensive bits like the forks, the bar ends, anything that you think might get damaged in a small spill. At the end of the day, if it's your road bike you're taking, you don't want it to get damaged, um, and you see it all the time. If you take all the minimum parts off, like the number plates, the indicators, the mirrors, then at least, and fit the crash protection, at least it might only be one or two fairings that got damaged. Um, I mean, if you get into it and you quite enjoy the track days, but you can't afford to have a separate track bike, the bare minimum I would suggest, if you're going to do a few a year, would be to treat yourself to some fairly basic track fairings. You don't even need to paint them, just bolt them on, take all the kit we've just spoke about off the bike, and then at least if you do have a spill, you've got all your genuine original stuff to put back on the bike. So that's kind of the basics if you're looking at taking a road bike. Luckily, we're not taking a road bike. We're very fortunate to have a, a track-only focused bike. So let's run through some of the additional checks that we're going to do on that. And also, these checks would be completed on the road bike as well. So, folks, moving on to the real bike prep for the day. Now you've got all the, um, the little bits and pieces out of the way and the bits off the bike that you don't need if it's a road bike. The first thing to point out would be that among... I don't know if it's the same with... Uh, tracks all over the world but definitely in the UK you must have a brake lever guard fitted like this 
to stop any contact with the front brake lever on all UK tracks now. So these are quite readily available online. You can spend upwards of £150 or you can spend £10. I would advise getting a half decent one because at the end of the day it's there to protect you. A lot of them come as a pair. You don't need the clutch one. On my one I've got the clutch as well because they came as a pair. But it does offer that little bit of extra crash protection if you do go down on it. So it's always there. Okay, if we start at the front of the bike, the first thing to note is how the bike's been stored since the last time you've used it. So I like to store mine on the paddock stands with the tyre warmers on and it's out of direct sunlight. So there we know, hopefully, it's been stored in a good way. It's normally on a trickle charger as well all the time. So that's the first thing, is to think about the storage of your bike when you're not using it. So we begin at the front. First thing to check is the tyres. So you want to be looking at the tyres, looking at the tread of the tyres. Uh, inflate them roughly to the right pressure you're going to be using for the day. Don't get too hung up on the tyres. At the end of the day, the TT boys are doing faster laps on a lot of their super stock bikes than they do on their super bike. So the road tyres now that you can buy are more than capable of performing on track. However, if you do have some nice soft rubber, it is gonna be needing a little bit more looking after. So just, uh, just go over it and check the tyres. I would also go over the entire bike and give it a thorough clean. And when I say a thorough clean, I mean you're going in there, you're looking at all the bits and pieces whilst you're going around and cleaning it. A lot of the time, you'll find things just by looking. So you need to give it a good once over and a good clean. Then I would be checking all your fluids, so your coolant level, your oil level, and have a good look around the shock absorber. Get in there and have a, have a good look around it, and especially the fork seals. Have a good look around there and make sure you've got no fork seals or brake fluid leaking around the front wheel area. These things are often overlooked. Definitely something that you need to be checking. If you've got the opportunity when you're cleaning it, if you can take the wheels of and you're confident enough to take the wheels out of the bike and actually give the calipers a good clean, that's also advisable. Whilst you're in there, have a good look over the brake pads. See what sort of condition they're in, see how much life you think there is left in them. If you think it might be getting a bit close for the day, then order yourself a spare set of pads and take them with you. You don't even have to fit them before the day if you think you might get the day out of them, but at least you've got the spares with you in case you might need them. So a good inspection over the discs, make sure they're not lipped, make sure these ones do have a bit of play in them because they're proper race discs, but make sure your discs haven't got any play, make sure your pads have got good wear, your fork seals aren't leaking, and your tyres are in good condition, set roughly to the kind of pressure you're going to be running for the day. And then moving backwards along the bike, again make sure you've got your lever guards fitted, if you're going for one side or both sides, that's important to do. If you have the suspension adjusted, or if you have adjustable suspension, aftermarket suspension, especially steering dampers, things like that, even if you're not comfortable setting the suspension up, it's always nice to know before you go out where the suspension's set at. So that's quite a simple job to sort of wind the clickers all the way in or all, all the way out from the position they're set at, write it down and put them back to where they are, at least then you have a good base setting of knowing where the suspension has been set at to begin with. That's another thing is whilst you're on the suspension, when was the last time the fork or the shock fluid was changed? Was it since, has it not been changed since 6000 BC? You know, a lot of this is overlooked and it's unbelievably important to service your suspension correctly. The difference it can make to the handling of the bike is, you know, it just needs to be done. So that's the front end there, having a good look over it. Working away around, like I say, check your uh, all around the engine for oil leaks, coolant leaks, anything like that. As you're working away around the back, check your chain, check your tension of your chain, make sure it's not too slack, not too loose. The other thing that's important is to check the gearing on the bike. So if the gearing is set roughly correctly for the track that you're going to be going to, and if you've got spare wets with wheels, make sure that's got the same gearing on as well for the track at the same time. Have a look at the battery. This say this has got a trickle charger on. Make sure the bike starts. Start it up, 
give it a run. A lot of these sit over the winter and are not used for a long time. So you want to make sure the bike actually starts before you take it out on track. If you've got a camera set up on there, make sure your camera mounting is all secure and you've got a security lanyard device or a cable tie or something just to get hold of it in case it does go flying off. These cameras cost a lot of money. Not only that, you don't want them flying down the track and hitting another rider at all. And then basically, give it a good quick once over. Give it a good nut and bolt check. All the little bits and pieces you can get to, all the clip-on bolts in here, all the top yoke bolts, all the fairing fasteners, anything that you might think might work loose. I mean, a lot of the times these crash bungs are aftermarket and they're not lock tighted in. So check all your crash bungs, sprocket nuts, anything that's easily accessible, caliper fixing bolts, check the torque settings of them, make sure it's nice and safe. At the end of the day, these bikes take an absolute hammering around track. So they do have things working loose and you do need to keep on top of them a lot more regularly than you would do a road bike. So it's good to have a very, very good look around it. And then whilst you've got the opportunity, if you've got adjustable rear sets like these and adjustable clip-ons on the handlebars, have a look at the ergonomics of the bike. You've got the opportunity here, whilst it's here in your garage, to sort of to sit on it, to try and get yourself comfortable, to get yourself set up on it. If you've got a big screen, put a big screen on it. It's a very, very physical thing riding one of these big bikes. Even if you're not that fast, it's still physical to manhandle it around so you want to be making sure you're comfortable on there so whilst you've got the time and the opportunity have a little play around move some of the some of the adjustable ergonomic bits and get yourself comfortable and that's it really guys you just want to be going over it making sure the whole thing is safe fit for purpose and you're comfortable to ride it at speed um, i can't emphasize enough how much how important it is just to have a, a quick look over it um, I'm really, really pleased I did it on this today because I've actually found quite a serious looking leak in the under tray. So it's something I wouldn't have known about until I'd got a track if I hadn't already looked over it. I don't know if you guys can see it down there, but it's quite an angry, serious looking leak in there. So I'm going to have to strip the fairings off and find out where that's come from because I don't want that to be hanging around when we're on track. So yeah, there we go guys. Enough tomfoolery, let's wrap the video up. Okay folks, now we've looked at most of the, the other stuff that you can work on for the day, the physical bits and pieces. Let's look at probably what is the most important thing to get the most out of the day, which is yourself. So this is all about your mindset going into the day. Now, the best way to get anything out of the day is your mindset. As an old saying goes, 90% uh, of professional sport is nor for the eyebrows. So depends what you're going there for and your mindset before you set off on the day. But what you should remember is whether you're an advanced track rider that's done 15 track days a year and raced and everything else, and you're going for a testing session, or you're a newcomer to the track and you're turning up on a gold wing, you've paid the same money for the time that you're out on track. So you've all got equal opportunity to the track space available, or should have. So treat each other with respect, be sensible, be aware, um, have your wits about what's going on, and be prepared, which is what we are trying to talk you through today. Uh, my advice would be to build into the day nice and gently. A lot of people you see it all the time, they go to a track day, they think they're a fast road rider, especially on their first track days, and they will be flat out down the straights, last on the brakes, really hard, turn it in, knee on the floor, stand it up, squirt it out the corner, but they're all over the track, they've got no idea what gear they should be in for the corner, what the real racing line is, people behind them aren't sure what they're doing. So my advice would be, learn the racing line, learn what gears you should be in for the corners, and then stick to that racing line and just slowly throughout the day work on your weakest point and end up braking later, accelerating earlier, and you will have made so much more progression by the end of the day than what you would if you go there and just ride like I've just explained. That's, that's not the best way to get the most out of the track time. It's nice to have a small goal for each session if you feel like you want to learn to trail brake a bit further into a corner or you need to hang off more, or you need to be using your vision more to be looking at where you're going. It's very, very different to road riding. 
Um, it's, a, it's quite a strange experience the first time you do it. A lot of people won't use the full width of the track because they're so used to road riding and the vision. A lot of people are looking straight in front of them, looking for the potholes that you normally find on UK roads, when in fact you need to be looking at where you want to be going and then your bike and you will naturally follow that trajectory. Um, so you just need to do the most you can to get yourself relaxed on the bike, comfortable with the bike, smooth, and then being able to work on your technique to make you a faster and safer rider. Once you build a solid technique, a solid foundation, it will then just be a matter of time and practice to increase the speed. But you won't be doing anything dangerous before you start to then try and push on a little bit and go faster. If you've got bad technique to begin with, you'll very, very quickly come unstuck if you're just relying on the motorcycle's electronics or other people around you to keep you safe. So that would be my, my advice. And one last key final point to make on this is the lap time is not the be all and end all of improvement for the day. So don't go there with the intention of saying, I'm gonna get down to this lap time. It is about your safety and your technique to end up going faster. So I would never advise to be aiming to hit a certain lap time. The lap time will come once you become comfortable on the bike. So that's it guys, it's hope that that has helped you somewhat, uh, giving you a little bit of an insight into what you need to do to try and prepare for the day. Like I said, I'm not trying to tell anybody how to suck eggs, and there's lots of other information out there that feel free to go and explore yourself. A lot of social um, sites and groups that you can join on and get information from. But yeah, go and have fun on your motorcycle, be safe, and get out there.